Greetings. The contents of the previous video lecture was intended to be a preliminary for this one and I strongly encourage you to possibly watch that video. I have provided the site link of that uh, video uh, in the comment section. Now, <clears throat> with rational functions goes polynomial and with polynomial goes degree. That will make the rational function to have three different kinds, three kinds, let's say. One is that the degree of the polynomial numerator is less than degree of the polynomial of denominator. The other one is that degree of the polynomial of numerator is equal to the degree of the polynomial of denominator. And the third one will be degree of the numerator will be equal, uh, greater than the degree of denominator. Now, <clears throat> I have selected second one, which degree of numerator is equal to the degree of denominator for today's lecture. And then for other two lectures coming, I'm going to discuss about degree of numerator to be less and the other one degree of the uh, numerator to be greater than. So, but the concept is really same. So if you really comprehend this one real well, the other two should be very similar. Okay, then let's get started, shall we? Now, uh, I have selected this example and I have a reason for that. Now, the degree of this, as you notice, numerator is two, denominator is two, and the, the polynomial, we have no problem with the domain of the numerator. And the, but the domain of the denominator, we have to be careful, whatever can make denominator zero is not in the domain. It's not in the domain does not mean you ignore it. In fact, in this case, they are more important to consider them. Now, if they are written in this form, it's a little bit more difficult to find the zeros of the polynomial, those that they make the polynomial zero, if you, uh, uh, if you uh, substitute for x, those values. And um, I don't like to call them uh, troublemakers when they are in the denominator. Let's not label them troublemaker, but let's label them uh, critical points, those points that they make denominator zero in this case. And <clears throat> if we can write them into the factor form, then they are much easier, more explicit to see the uh, critical points. So let's do it, if I may. Now this is the factor form of this. Now the good question, in fact is a critical question to ask, is that what about if we couldn't factor the polynomial, the given polynomial? In other words, can every given polynomial be factored? It's a good critical question to ask, and the answer is yes. <clears throat> Fundamental theorem of algebra guarantees, is a theorem, it's not conjecture guarantees that every polynomial <coughs> of degree n, <coughs> excuse me, of degree n can be written into factor form of n linear factors in the set of complex, of course. And if you're dealing with the set of reals, then <coughs> can be written in the um, uh, factors of uh, linear and quadratic. My apologies. So knowing that one, <coughs> excuse me again, knowing that we can do that is possible so we go ahead and, and uh, put the attempt to factor them. Now the point is that the fundamental, fundamental theorem of algebra does not tell you how to do it. Now how to do it is an art. Now there are techniques that we can learn but even those they are not 100%. And one of them is Vieta 
formula that I have uploaded a video lecture just for that. And the other one is quadratic formula that we are all familiar with. And the other one is a rational function. What is it? A rational root theorem is called. They do help us to uh, set up the factor form of it. But the worst comes to worst, if you couldn't um, write them in factor form, I'm talking for higher degree polynomial, then there are numerical method to do it. But that is beside the subject. As a matter of fact, about just this subject is uh, uh, volumes of books can be written. And that is the subject of so-called abstract algebra. It's a field that deals with this kind of problem. Okay, so now we are dealing with a kind of simple one that we are able, it's easy for us to factor them. In this case, we are using a Vieto formula and we do that. Now that I have factored that one, now the, the, those the critical points, those that they cannot be in the domain of the function are more explicit, more clear to see them. One of them is two, and the other one is four. So let's see how the function will behave on this, around this point, because we can get as close to this point as we wish, but we cannot select this point. We cannot say, let what is f of two or what is f of four. Okay, then let me now go to the next, if I may. <clears throat> And one thing I would like to emphasize, very important, that the student does have tendency to uh, see things like that and they cancel. Because these two factors, they, they are same, they cancel them out. No, no, no. I have written in red color, no, no, no. Don't ever attempt to do that. We will see why. And these two factors are going to be there for the entire uh, uh, the discussion. Not just for this problem, any other problem. Just don't go and make life easy for yourself and cancel them. One reason is, I have written one reason, but there are other reasons that I go over that. One reason is this. I hope that they are clear. I have written large enough so that I don't go back and forth to zoom in and out them. No, one reason is that these two are not equivalent. They are not same. In fact, they have different uh, graph in a, in a sense. No, this, this, the graph of that, if we make it as a function, is not about, um, uh, we cannot, is not defined at x equal to two. You can see that. And this one, it is defined at x equal to two. You see that the, value ha the function has value at x equal to 2, this one does not. And this is the one that we are discussing. So this is one reason. There are other reasons that I will be discussing as we go ahead. Okay then, next now let's see. Uh, yes, I have this one. Sorry, I don't have access to a whiteboard so that I could right but while I'm lecturing. No, um, um, uh, I have already mentioned this one, huh? uh, 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 the value of the function is not defined at 2 and 4. Now let's see what happens that when we get closer and closer to 2. Now I have a chart for you to write as uh, students like to Right notes. Now I'm approaching to two um, on the on my number line. Let's say I, in the, this is my number line, and this is two. I'm approaching two from right hand side, and I leave to the students as a homework to hand in. In fact, to make a chart similar to what I have made but to approach to two from left-hand side. Let's see what I mean by right-hand side and left-hand side. First, I started from three, three is to the right of two. And I, I give it to the value of function, now look what happens. When I give three, you see I didn't cancel these two. 
When I give three, this becomes one. When I, the same three that I'm giving, all this excess will have that value. So it's not that one of them get the other one doesn't. So when I give three to this factor, I get one. When I get three to this factor, I get one. One over one is one, I call it the skinny one, and one times any other number is equal to itself. So this is one, one times anything itself. So these two, I can say one and one, they cancel each other. I didn't say x minus two and x minus two cancel each other. No, when I give for x three, this becomes what? This becomes eight. But same eight, same, same, uh, same three that I give to this one. When I give x three here, this becomes what? Negative one. So when I give three, the value of the function is eight over negative one, which is negative eight. Now next one, when I said to the right, that's what I mean, I go to 2.5. I'm going toward 2. Now, when I give in 2.5, again, with the same analogy, uh, analogy or ana analysis, I give 2.5 for x here and here and here and here. And when I give 2.5 here, I get what? I get 0 0.5. 0 0.5 over 0 0.5 is 1. Again, I call it a skinny one. And 1 times any number is itself. So this becomes one, does not cancel each other in a sense, becomes one. One times this is this, and the same value that I get to that, I'm giving to this x. And what is it? I'm giving 2.5 and 2.5, and the answer ends up to be 7.5 over negative 1.5. And I continue. Next one, I go closer to 2, 2.01. And again, I put 2.01 for each all of these excess. These two, they, they, they give me a skinny bond, numerator and denominator same. And then these two, they give me 7.01 uh, divided by negative 1.99. All right, negative number. So then next one, I give it even closer to two. Again, I'm approaching to the from the right. So when I give, 2.00001 and uh, you can use calculator of course for this and I end up to this value 7 divided by this. So I get very very good feeling that I'm approaching to some kind of number. As I get closer and closer to 2 I get approach to the value of the function to be negative 7 over 2. I'm approaching to that. That negative 7 over 2 is the limit the limit we call it. Now by limit I don't mean limit in calculus, I don't want to scare students that has a delta epsilon definition, has its own definition and the entire uh, calculus is seat on the concept of limit, but that is beside the subject. By limit I mean the literal meaning of the word. So as x gets closer and closer to 2 from right hand side, the function, the limit of that, that will never reach it, in fact, that's the limit, will be negative 7 over 2. Now again, I repeat myself as a homework, I ask a student to do similar uh, chart like that, but approach to 2 from left hand side, which means we start from let's say 1, then 1.5, then go uh, the, the 1.9, then 1.999, then 1.999, and so on and so forth, and then see what number you are approaching, and that end up to be approaching exactly the same number again, from negative seven over two. So the function at this, at, at negative two, excuse me, at two, the value of the function, the limit of the value of the function will be negative seven over two. They call it the whole. It's infinitesimally small because we can get as close as to, uh, to two as we wish, to in the end, in the infinitesimal world, end up to be a, a, a kind of a pixel, you can say, or a point in reality. Okay, now we are done with this one and hopefully you are comfortable. Now let's see if the same thing happens if we approach to four, because four was also a critical point. Let's see what happens in that case.
Oh, by the way, I forgot one thing before I go to Paul, is I have a sketch a graph for you in a sense that uh, is uh, good to see it for yourself. Is a kind of geometrical presentation. As uh, the, my two is here, and as I am approaching two from both from right hand side, the value of the function comes to negative seven over two. You can see that. So when I go, I start, for example, when I, put, when I gave him three, he gave me negative eight. You see, it's way down. And then I get different value, 2.5 and so on and so forth, and this graph came out of it. Now, when I reach at this point, which is the limit value of the function, I just bypass it. And as a matter of fact, when you go to calculus, you see this kind of hole, they call it um, is a removable discontinuity, because the function soon seems to be discontinuous at this point, so it has a removable discontinuity. And then when it goes and hit the y-axis, it's easy to know that you put for x zero and see what will be the y-value. And in this case, um, uh, y-value, I didn't write it, but will be, and is to the, to the lower than negative one. And then keep going and see where you hit the, uh, the x-axis again and so on. That is the graph of that for this board. Okay, now let's see what happens when we approach four, again I have selected to approach four from right hand side and I will be giving as a homework to the student to do the very same approaching from left hand side to four. So let's see what happens to, uh, to that. When I'm approaching four from about from right hand side. Now, I started with five. I give the value to the function, I give 5, I get 3, I give 5, I get 3, 3 over 3 is 1, 1 times any number is itself, so these two gives me 1, then when I give 5 here, I get 10, when I get 5 here, I get 1, and the answer will be 10. Now, I go now closer to 4, let's say 4.5, when I give 4.5, Exactly same thing, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5, simple arithmetic, and the answer ends up to be 19. So from 10, all of a sudden, value of the function becomes 19. Then I go closer to 4, 4.1. Uh, and I give that, and the answer becomes 91. Much, long, much bigger than the other two. And then I go to another one, let's say 4.001. And when I give that one, the answer becomes 9,000 and one. So the value of function becomes terribly big. Is that right? Now again, I go to 4.0001, and look at that, the answer becomes 90,000 and one. If I want to put it in a scale, same scale as a horizontal and vertical, I need a 10 miles picture, uh, a paper to locate the value of the y. That. So as you notice that when I approach to four from right hand side, the value of the function goes crazy, goes toward moon. But then at at four itself, the function is not defined. So the the x equal to four will be we call it asymptote. So asymptote is a in this case is a vertical line that uh, that. Uh, the value of the function, the, the graph of the function gets closer and closer, but never touches that. All right? Now, some people, they get a little bit confused when you say x equals to 4 is the, is the uh, equation of the asymptote line, vertical line. But then they say, hey, x equals to 4 is a point on the, on the, on the x-axis, but you say is a line. Now, in order not to get in that confusion, it's good to write it into set notation form. And you set the set of all x, y, such that x equal to uh, 4. So y can have any, every other value. So that will be the asymptote. Now, the next one, I have, I have an sketch the graph uh, completely, purposely, because I'm going to go to the next lecture that I give, I'm going to go through this one for the first five minutes of the lecture and review that, and at that, I'm going to give the complete 
picture of the of the graph of that. But for the time being, I just draw one of them for you, and I go and try to improve your kind of conceptually understanding of the subject and improve your imagination about that. Now here, this x equal to four. Uh, hopefully it's visible to you. That one is a vertical line that forms the graph of the function will get closer and closer. We already investigate, but we'll never touch it. Now, I'm not going to stand next to you as a mirror image of you, but I'm going to be as you are standing so that you can see it better. As, as x approaches to 4, the value of function goes what? Goes up and up and up. So that will be the kind of graph is going up Closer, get closer and closer to this line, which is asymptote. Now then the question is, what happens when x approaches infinity, which means x gets larger and larger. Now, let me go to the original one. Yes. Now, this one, to, to talk that, is good to maybe look at it this way. When x gets very, very big, terribly large, these two terms can be ignored. Because if you have an ocean, you take two drop out of it, the ocean doesn't even feel something has been taken out of it. So these terms are going to go really be ignored. The same is true with denominator. So you are left with x squared over x squared. When x gets terribly, terribly big, then this x squared over x squared is one. So as x approaches, infinity in a sense become larger and larger, the value of the function approaches one. Never go below one, is that right? So the graph will be again, uh, I'm standing as you are, and the graph will be going this way, when you go close to four, and when you go toward the, uh, 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 you give more and bigger, and bigger value to x, the value of the function is going to go toward what? Toward one. So hopefully you have a good uh, picture in your head how the graph will look like. And, um, and uh, again, in the next video, in the next lecture, I'm going to draw the picture for you, the, the graph for you. But I'm sure you have a good picture and I don't really need to, have, uh, to do that. Okay then, I, uh, I thank you for the opportunity. I hope that this lecture was beneficially. And, uh, and uh, I'm uh, looking for, forward to uh, give two or three more video lectures about this subject and, um, uh, and I salute you all and uh, wish you prosperity and uh, please stay safe. So long.